Claude is here from Talking Solutions. If you have any questions for how to buy a Nikawa, he's the man. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome everyone to the fifth edition of World Coffee Conference 2023, organized by the International Coffee Organization in collaboration with the Coffee Board of India, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of Karnataka and Government of India. Our very next session is going to be on alternative fuel for the future of coffee roasting. And I would like to invite Mr. Ringo Benzen from the Probat sales team to please come onto the stage and take over the session. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Yeah, first of all, uh, Welcome uh, on behalf of Probart SE to join us here in uh, this workshop. Um, we have, uh, of course, uh, a topic on uh, today's session, what is, I think, interesting for everybody who uh, is interested in susti sustainable solutions in the future. Alternative fuels in roasting in the future will from my opinion and from our opinion become a very important topic and Mrs. Silvana Weiler and me, we would like to use the next two hours to go a little bit deeper into this topic, show you the alternatives Probat can offer here in the market and like to discuss with you of course also what is your opinion about and we want to show you of course that the final result, independent what kind of fuel you use, is and that is the coffee is always the same. Alternative fuel for the future of coffee roasting. Uh, why we have this topic on the table. And first of all, I would like to give you a very short introduction who Probat is and why we are driving these kind of topics that much. Okay, then I have to do this from here. So we are offering coffee uh, 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 solutions for the coffee industry since uh, already 1868. So we are a long uh, time in the market. We gain a lot of experience when it comes to coffee roasting. And uh, we love, of course, these products uh, because it is a very exclusive thing, what we have and we want to cover and save this, of course, also for the future. Um, and coffee is our passion, like it is for our clients. We, Provat SE, we have four uh, different produc production areas for manufacturing equipment in the coffee industry. One is in Germany, where I'm coming from, and Ivala as well. Uh, the second one is in Curitiba in Brazil, then we have another uh, workshop in uh, the US and we have and we are very proud to have the fourth uh, workshop here in India in this nice city of Bengaluru. And by the way, this roaster where we do the test and trials today is manufactured from our colleagues, from our team here in India. Our market is global so you can find and I think you gain already this experience our products wherever you are in the world. And now I'm coming to the topic, what drives us? Uh, and of course, what drives us are the drivers of our clients, let's say. And these are today, of course, mainly uh, energy consumption and e efficiency of a plant, process safety. It is, of course, the coffee and all the coffee trends in the market. But it is, of course, also and that is coming a more and more bigger topic, the sustainability. We manufacture products from very small size up to big ones, and we are, of course, always famous when it comes to roasters, but uh, as you may know, we are manufacturing all products what you need from the green coffee con uh, receiving stations and cleanings up to roasting, storaging of coffee, grinding, conveying, and all these things. So everything what you need to produce coffee 
in small size or in big size, that we can offer to you. And when it comes to, to coffee roasters, and now I'm focusing more and more to this subject here, um, we have, of course, specialty coffee roasters, which are small coffee roasters, mainly drum roasters, and we have the big industrial roasters, which have capacities up to six tons per hour. So we have a very big range of products in our portfolio, and, uh, and this is, of course, also very, very important to us. And uh, when you look to the industrial roasters, they are not only drum roasters, like the classical way of roasting is, but they are also 100% uh, um, air heated roasting systems with very low roasting times. These are the Jupiter and the Saturn technology we have. So that is only a part of our industrial portfolio and that shows how different requirements we have in the market. And when it comes to specialty coffee roasting, then it is, of course, our drum roaster series what is uh, interesting and important for our clients. We have uh, the P series, what is one unit is this P5. We have more retro designed roasters, that is the OG and the, uh, the whole OG series. And we have former models, uh, G roasters, which are also coming from the uh, traditional way of roasting, I would say. And this roaster here, you, I think you can see it here on the screen. This is the roaster what we have here for our session in operation. And, and that is now the interesting thing. Uh, of course, classic, in history, we came mainly from for further from oil heated systems to gas and natural gas heated systems. And today we have a uh, yeah, we see, of course, that gas is a limit god, so that we have to think about options and, and alternatives for the future. And beside gas, we can equip all our roasters with all different gases what, you, what are available in the market. But beside that, we are starting, uh, we started already a couple of years ago to develop electrical heated systems and bring new in the market our hydrogen heated roaster systems. For all roasters in our portfolio, not only for the shop roasters, but also for the big industrial roaster, we can offer the tailor-made the right solution in every market. Because our goal is, of course, that also in the future, when may natural gas is a limited god, that we find ways that our clients are safe, that they can roast with that fuel what they can get in their, in their country. No? And that's the reason why we are uh, doing uh, this kind of developments and we want to be, of course, uh, um, we want to present, of course, also sustainable uh, fuels in the future. In our opinion, it is today electrical, heated systems and hydrogen, but you never know. We are also thinking about future options and uh, may in 10 or 20 years, we are or may in five years we are talking already about different alternatives, but from our point of view at the moment, this is that what uh, is, has the biggest chance, let's say, to be the fuel in the future. And now I would like to give the uh, microphone to Ilvana. She will do ma the main job today. She will do the workshop. And uh, yeah, Ilvana, that's your show now. Yes? Oh, yes. Now you can hear me. Okay. Welcome also from my side. Um, I'm Ilvana Weiler. I'm trainer at uh, ProBart, uh, mainly for our industrial customers, but also doing SCA certifications um, as an a SCA ASC. And um, yeah, now I will... It works. <laughs> um, I will take over the subject on alternative fuels for the future of, the, um, of coffee roasting. And I think on this picture you already can see um, some possible alternatives. Um, so important for the future of coffee roasting is, of course, um, to be um, um, a regenerative um, energy source. Yeah, And we see on this picture, of course, um, 
um, photovoltaic um, we, or solar power, we see wind power, we see the hydrogen molecule, and we also see um, options of producing biofuels. And these are, in fact, yeah, the, the next, or yeah, the, the green fuels for the future. Yeah, because, um, yeah, the future needs, of course, to be green, to be um, sustainable, and uh, we need to g uh, get away from uh, the typical gas, natural gas, and oil solutions. So first of all, I will speak about a few pros and cons of the different solutions. Uh, and then later on, we will um, go directly to the P5 electrically heated and roast a few batches to show you the flexibility of the system. Uh, first of all, I start with hydrogen. So hydrogen um, is a solution, could be a solution. Uh, but hydrogen, to be honest, is a solution if it's a green hydrogen. So if it's sourced through um, yeah, regenerative sources like solar power or wind, wind um, um, turbines. Yeah. Um, in general, you can say um, the coffee doesn't care about the heating system, um, which fuel, fuel you, you use, uh, because we roast with air with the heated air. So which kind of fuel you use for the burner, um, the coffee doesn't care, as long as it gets the energy to, to get its brown color. Um, so with the hydrogen roaster, as well as with the electrical roaster, and as well as with other fuels, you will get the same result as with a natural gas roaster or with an with a, um, oil roaster. And uh, like I said, it's, um, hydrogen is only sustainable when we use the green hydrogen. Um, and as you know, you can see now here, but uh, we just introduced the hydrogen roaster onto the market. Uh, so the burner for the shop roaster segment is already available. We, we built already roasters up to uh, P12 with hydrogen roasters, uh, with hydrogen burners. Um, the P25 will follow soon. And so um, also these um, different sizes of roasting systems will be available with hydrogen burners. Um, you see in, on the cons side, um, burners for industrial application is still uh, in development. So we already tested it in our technology center. Um, so it's um, absolutely um, yeah, available. It's possible to roast also on industrial scale um, on hydrogen. Um, we're currently uh, equipping two of our machines in our technology center with um, hydrogen burners. So in the next months, there will be also possible to, to do test roasts on industrial scale roasters. Um, but the biggest problem with hydrogen is, of course, the missing infrastructure. Yeah? Um, hydrogen is... Um, the sourcing of hydrogen is a little bit more difficult and the infrastructure is missing. There are only a few, few areas of the world where you find maybe um, bigger hydrogen producing plants or even pipelines, like we have a pipeline in Europe from Brussels to Antwerp. There is a source where you could, of course, directly uh, connect your system to and be able to, to uh, roast with hydrogen. But in most other cases, you will need hydrogen bottles or hydrogen tanks um, to use um, your roaster uh, with this kind of fuel. The other difficulty is, of course, hydrogen is a very small molecule. So um, the current network, gas network components might be um, yeah, not tight enough to keep the hydrogen. So um, maybe there have to be some adjustments too, some, um, some uh, refurbishments of, of uh, the gas piping system. And of course, hydrogen is a highly explosive um, gas, so you need to be a little bit careful. Maybe higher safety levels are necessary um, for um, equipping the roasters with it. Another alternative, I've mentioned it at the beginning uh, of my speech, uh, is biogas. 
So biogas, of course, would be a nice solution because it's uh, low in CO2 and very low in NOx level values. So the components um, or the, the emissions you, you produce when burning fuel. Um, and usually biogas is extracted from renewable materials like biomass and can also be produced from fossil fuels. Um, in general, um, it's possible to use uh, biogas because um, you can use the LPG infrastructure, what's already existing, um, and burners can be easily adapted to biogas. We already have some, several projects with biogas plants. Here's one named or listed. That's a project with a P25 um, with a whole bio biogas plant. But again, on the con side is biogas is not available everywhere. And it's also not available throughout the year. Yes, for example, in summertime or in, in harvesting season, you might have quite a lot of um, a biomass which you could use for the production of biogas. In wintertime, it could be a little bit different. Yeah? Um, the current LPG hardware, so the burners also um, have to be a little bit adapted and modified to biogas, but it's uh, possible to use them. And um, yeah, the, the biggest challenge for using biogas is to have the amount of biogas available for the roasting process because it's, um, yeah, you need, of course, quite a lot of gas uh, for, for the operation of a roaster. And, of course, the biggest issue with biogas is always that it could be in competition to food on agricultural areas. And that's, uh, I think, the biggest point uh, where, when we talk about uh, sustainability, um, what, what uh, could speak against biogas. Sorry. So coming, coming now to the electrical heated roaster, which we will use uh, later in this workshop. Um, when we compare the electrical um, P5 to um, the, the gas heated version, um, you can see from um, the heating element and from the gas burner, uh, the nominal heat load is quite comparable. You need a little bit more energy for the electrical heating um, element, uh, and you, uh, or you, you will have a bit more heat load uh, available from the electrical heat uh, element. Um, but of course, you don't need gas. So usually for, for the uh, use of a natural gas roaster, you need 0 0.07 cubic meters uh, of gas per kilo uh, green beans. And the current consumption for, uh, sorry, roasted beans, <laughs> and the current cons consumption for the uh, electrical heated uh, system is 0 0.8 kilowatt hours per, per kilogram. And what does that exactly mean when we look onto um, bigger roaster sizes? So we've seen the numbers for the P5. Now we have here listed um, three different sizes of roasters. So a P25, which is a 25 kg roaster. A PX120 has a batch size of 120 kilo. A Jupiter 5000, which is a industrial scale tangential roaster has a batch size of 750 kg. If we would equip these roasting systems with electric, electrical heating uh, element, um, you see, maybe you can see, I don't know if, if it's not too low on, uh, on that slide, you will need for the P25 50 kilowatts heating capacity, which is more or less practically, um, yeah, you could solve that. Um, it's uh, easy to produce. But as soon as we look on the, on the bigger um, roasters, PX120, you will already need 300 kilowatt heating capacity. And then for, for the biggest of our roasters, the five tons machine, um, 3,200 kilowatts 
um, heating capacity. And that's, of course, the big challenge of the electrical heated roasters. Yeah, you need to have, uh, yeah, the, the problem is the local grid to have the supply um, for so much um, heating capacity. I just give you some numbers to maybe um, be able to, to uh, um, yeah, understand how much energy is that. Yeah, so we've seen the, once back again to the PX120, 300 kilowatts heating capacity on our production facility in Emmerich, we've, uh, we've covered it with solar panels. And we can say we produce around 250 kilowatts peak, um, um, yeah, peak kilowatts um, uh, on, with these photovoltaics. But that's really in the peak production. So it means it's not enough, not even enough to cover a whole plant. Uh, with photovoltaics to run a PX120 because we need 300 kilowatts um, uh, for, for running this burner. Yeah, so, and um, when we then look on the normal capacity of a wind power plant on offshore, we are at 6,000 kilowatts. So we can run maybe one going back to, no, oh, sorry, in the other direction. Going back to this slide, we can run one Jupiter 5000, but a second will be a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless, it is really a good option, especially for, for smaller roasting capacities to use um, an electrical heating system because you don't need um, separate yeah, gas um, pipes or gas bottles. Of course, much safer, uh, much more safe. Um, yeah, and it's as flexible as a gas roaster. Yeah. And now let's have a look um, on the heating or on the on the burner system of the two different roasters. So we have the gas heated roaster on the right side and the electrical heated roaster um, on the left side. So for the P5 and the P12. The P series in general, the housing and the drum cooling sieve is exactly the same. The only difference, you don't see my red dot, okay? Um, so the only difference is, of course, the burner, but it's, as you can see, is not such a big difference. For the gas version, we have a gas connection here, so this is where our gas uh, is arriving. I can see when I'm so close. Um, yes, and then um, this is the burning, a burner. So we have a filter where the fresh air for the gas air mixture um, is um, yeah, um, sucked in to the, to the burning uh, um, mixer. Um, and there the air is mixed then with the gas. And here a flame is produced. But the flame never touches directly the, the drum. It, we just heat up the air, so the hot air enters into the drum. And the same is here for the electrical heated um, roaster. We only have a fan here, which takes in the air needed for the roasting process. And the air is guided to, to a heating element that's placed here. We can also see it later on on the roaster itself. We, of course, need a pressure switch that, um, and, and a temperature sensor to um, shut off the heating element in case we have a over, overheating or um, the air is moving into the wrong direction. But the heating element, again, just heats the air, and the hot air enters then the roaster. And we made measurements um, with Arabica and Robusta coffee um, in the exhaust air. And um, the advantage of an electrical heated uh, roaster is, of course, the volatile organic compounds are reduced to approximately 15% from the, the gas burner version. 
CO levels are similar because usually most of the CO is rather emitted from the coffee than from the burner itself. Um, then we have sulfur, um, uh, sulfur oxide. Is it the right German English? I'm just missing it right now. Um, it is not at all measurable for electrical heating because we have no burning process on the burner itself. Yeah? Um, SO2 is only produced when you b burn a fuel, and that's in this case not the case, so we can't measure any SO2. Oxygen in the roast air is also a little bit reduced compared to the gas heating, which could be also an advantage uh, for the coffee itself. And of course, the biggest impact is the CO2 generated in, this in the burning process, which is 90% lower for the electrical heating compared to gas. Yeah. The res residual 10%, they come from the coffee itself. Uh, you can't, of course, avoid that the coffee is producing CO2 during the roasting process because, because this is a normal uh, chemical behavior uh, in the roasting process. Uh, and at, at especially at the end of the roast, the coffee emits a lot of CO2. So as a summary for the electrical heated version, electrical heated roasters um, use the same controls. Um, as uh, the gas um, heated roasters, and they will create a similar roasting curve. They are as flexible as a gas version, and we will see that later on also when we roast. CO2 footprint is much lower, so you've seen 90% less CO2, um, and especially when we also use renewable energy to uh, generate this um, current. Yeah, and then of course a disadvantage could be the electrical grid connection. So it must be clearly um, available throughout the uh, whole operational uh, time of the roaster. Uh, it's, it's not enough that it's available for half an hour or an hour because usually you roast for several hours and if your current uh, drops in that time, yeah, you, you are not able to continue the roasting. And we've seen that there are also other possible substitutes for natural gas, which could be sustainable too. Um, so um, initially, my plan was a little bit uh, different for, the, for this session than, than we will do it now. So uh, initially, I wanted you to, to cup three different um, coffees, but we will put that to the end of this session because uh, we need to, to uh, brew them first, and we will um, do the roasting first, but I will still uh, say a few words through the th to the three coffees we will use. So um, I have roasted three times the same coffee with the same roasting color, same roasting time on these three different roaster types in our technology center. So uh, one with natural gas, one with electrical heating element, and one with hydrogen gas. So all uh, the variables are the same besides um, the, the, the fuel used. And I hope that these samples all taste the same. I haven't tasted them yet <laughs> on my own, so let's see if they taste the same. But um, we have done some uh, cupping with our probot uh, panel before these trials. and. Um, Several times we've tested the different um, roast, uh, burner uh, versions uh, and uh, done the testing in a triangulation cupping. So triangulation cupping is always used to uh, find differences, possible differences between cups. And we couldn't find any differences between um, these three versions of bur burners in the coffee. I hope that's the same for the coffees you will taste later on. Um, we've done also um, um, yeah, some measurements on a taste sensing system, and that's now exactly these samples. Um, the, the taste sensing sim uh, system we used is Incent, which is a Jap Japanese company, 
and you can say it's an electronical tongue. Yeah, so the results you get um, are now displayed here on a spider graph. And you can see in the middle is a zero curve, which is our reference as natural gra gas coffee. And um, the other two curves are um, the two different samples, hydrogen roaster and electri electric roaster. Um, and you see some small differences in coffiness and maybe some small differences in acidity for the other roaster types, but they are really very small. So uh, you can more or less say it's comparable, and let's see also in our tasting if it's really the same. So this is what we will do later on. And now, maybe if you want uh, to join me on the stage uh, at the roaster, we can do some uh, roasting. I will do an introduction onto the uh, roaster, and you can ask your questions. Yeah? OK? Thank you. You can turn on the roaster. I will share with you um, the controls. Um, so now you can, sh yeah, thank you. <laughs> the, the, this is now the roaster control of the roaster, so it's exactly the same screen we see here as well. That's why you see also now the, the small alarm on the, in the beginning. And like I said, this control um, is 100% the same for every version of roaster, uh, of the P5 um, we use. And um, you can see now the control screen. So at the moment, it's set to manual roasting. It's also possible to run a pre-saved profile, so to copy exactly the, the roasting profile, um, and the burner will be then be uh, automatically adjusted. We will do now some uh, manual roasting to show you um, how the, the system is working. And so now, right now, uh, we are we have just started the heater um, and uh, are heating up the roaster, and at around. 200 degrees product temperature, um, I will um, load the coffee into the roaster. Yeah. So on the top, on the left side, uh, you see the roasting time for uh, this batch as soon as I start the button in the right hand um, corner here. Uh, and that's what I will do when I start the batch, when I load the batch into the roaster. Um, you Sorry? This is this is the electrical version. Yeah. So we can also have a look inside if you want. Con uh, it's all convectional. Yeah. So because we don't have a direct contact of the drum uh, with the heating, with the burner. So that's the burner. So this is the fan for taking in the air we need for the roasting process. Here is, uh, are the heating elements. So that's many, um, um, yeah, it's kind of like a large scale hair dryer, <laughs> so to say, um, just as a burner for, for the, oh, sorry. Um, the maximum is, do you know the maximum temperature it can, can stand? It, it will definitely go up more, it's, uh, more than 400, 450. Um, I don't know what is the maximum. So at, at, I think uh, somewhere 500, it can carry much more. It's, it, it's not like a, like a lamp where, where it can burn. Yeah. Degrees. 
No, 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 no. No, Jupiter, Jupiter is running with 500. No, no. Supply air temperature is 500. Furnace. I don't. But if you don't produce. Yeah, but how do you produce more than 900 degrees when you add just 500? Yes, but we have a supplier temperature which is measured with a thermocouple. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But um, you never roast with 900 degrees. Um, yeah, so normally supplier temperature, we will see it also there. Uh, the third value, supplier temperature for the roasting process. Usually for this roaster, it will be somewhere between 300 and 400 degrees Celsius. Um, we see on the right hand side development time. This development time will just start when I set a marker for the first crack. Yeah, because of the, the uh, aroma development is always um, from first crack to the roast end um, of a profile. And um, that's why the timer will just start when I set the first crack. We see the rate of rise. So rate of rise means temperature development per minute in this case. Um, so it's a good, good uh, value to judge the process of how it is developing throughout uh, the roast and to react a little bit earlier than just looking on the product temperature itself. And we see the vacuum um, inside the roasting drum. It's important to have a vacuum. If we would have uh, overpressure inside the roaster, the roaster would smoke during the roasting process. So you need a vacuum to take away the smoke and also to have a forced convection to the coffee itself. Yeah, so that the air, hot air always passes the coffee uh, in the same direction. Okay. Um, okay. Then we have settings, or not settings, uh, the possibility to change the drum speed on the one hand side. So it's uh, usually um, not really necessary to change the drum speed, only if you would now decide, I want to, s to roast only 500 grams on this roaster because I don't have more coffee available. Of course, you can't really rely then on the product temperature because it's more or less just measuring the air. But it's possible to turn it into a brown color. There's, there's uh, no question. But for these smaller batch sizes, it would make sense to have a little bit higher drum speed to throw the coffee always into the um, hot air. Otherwise, it will stick quite uh, much on, on the outside of the drum. Yeah, and also, if you want to use um, different uh, products, like nuts, you want to roast nuts on that uh, roaster, it's also possible, but also for other uh, grain sizes or bean sizes, um, product sizes, it m could make sense to change the drum speed, yeah, just to make uh, sure that the coffee, or not the coffee, the product is properly mixed. And then you have here an adjustment for the heating. Uh, you can see the same. Uh, right now it's on 30%. Um, I will put it to 80 for the preheating. Um, and you will see now that it's getting uh, warm much faster now. I see it on the rate of rise. It's increasing now quite quickly. So the reaction time is yeah, as fast as for a gas heated roaster as well. Also for the gas heated roaster, the gas valve needs to open and it will take the same amount of time. Uh, also during the roasting, you don't have any kind of, of um, yeah, uh, how is it called, um, delay time, almost no delay time when you, do a, uh, when you set another setting. Of course, you will have a delay time because your insulation and your air in the drum is still hot, but that's the case also for the gas heated version. Yeah? When you adjust there, the burner, it takes some 10, 15 seconds until the new parameters are also at the coffee.
Okay. So now we will wait for the coffee uh, and, and the, the charging temperature. Do you have some questions in between? At what degrees? I will start with 200 degrees at the product temperature uh, thermocouple. To uh, make like a French roast American. Ah, you mean the end temperature? Uh, so, do we have to increase the time or the temperature? Uh, it de it it just depends on what you want to have as as a result in your cup. So, if you have usually when you um, roast darker, you will have less acidity but more bitter notes and more smoky notes. Yeah, but the other variable is the time. So also the time has an influence on the taste. Time and uh, lower temperature. So for a longer roasting time, you would need a lower temperature setting or burner setting at, throughout the roast in so general. It's the same way we tender our meat, you know, if you want farm. Yes, if you, if you want, yeah. Right, it's the same, yeah. But you never want to have, uh, on a barbecue, you want to have the meat medium inside. You never want to have that with coffee, because then you get the cereal notes in the coffee. Yeah? So it's, it's important for coffee roasting that the coffee is roasted uh, through the whole gene, uh, bean um, homogeneously. And that's why it's important how you dose your energy throughout the roast. Normally, you always start with a, with a higher energy setting at the beginning, and then you reduce throughout the roast because the coffee um, develops energy on its own through the chemical reactions. Yeah? And um, um, that's happening more or less um, from first crack onwards. So usually you have a reduction step just before the uh, first crack, because when you do it on the first crack, um, it could be already too late, because you're already in the, in the exothermic reactions. And then you're roasting curve will have a development like this, but you want to have it a smooth development, maybe even flat, to reduce acidity in the cup. If you want to have a peak acidity, you might want to have this kind of development. But in most cases, this development of the curve will have a very sharp um, acidity and, and an unpleasant acidity. Yeah. Yes. We uh, we have many options. So we, on the one hand side, we had now um, in the energy crisis during Corona, or last year it was, we had a lot of customers who wanted to have a dual option for uh, natural gas and natural oil. Uh, and, um, but we also have the option for, for example, the hydrogen roaster um, to have s separate burners for hydrogen, one um, for natural gas, and then to switch depending on what may be cheaper at the moment, or, um, yeah, I don't know, what, what's available at the moment. Also for other options, um, other fuels, it's, it's possible to do. Um, so in, in general, uh, it's like that, that you need a separ separate burner. Yeah, so um, you would have the option to, to set a flap or something to, to have that burner supplied with the fuel you need? That has to be customized. Yes. Yeah. But it's possible. And it, it's uh, also in the field. So you can see that also at some customers that they have dual burners. And with the hydrogen fuel, you said you incorporate some special safety features. What are those in addition to the ones that you already provide with the um, So. In general, when you process uh, hydrogen, the, the, the burner itself is not really a different burner. It's just adjusted a little bit differently to have the right gas and air mixture. Because for the hydrogen burner, or for burning of hydrogen, um, it has around one third of the um, energy of natural gas. So it needs you need more hydrogen in the mixture with air than you need for, for the, the natural gas. Yeah, and that's why you need to adjust the burner differently. Um, in this case, you don't need any other safety instruments besides the gas leakage, of course. Um, but you need to make sure that when you, when you um, 
attach your gas bottles or when you change between the bottles, um, you, you have a safe procedure. And that, that's then um, yeah, up to you for your uh, operation that, that uh, you make sure that there are no safety issues. Um, I don't know about that. So I, I, I don't think that there are cer certain... Uh, uh, Excuse me? Emergency, emergency water? Yeah. You mean for industrial roasters? Industrial. It's the same. It's exactly the same. Uh, you don't um, have any other measures. So it's, like I said, it's just a different burner adjustment in this case. Oh, I already passed the 200 degrees. You didn't mention. <laughs> Let's go down. Um, uh, it's heat up the power of the yes. Producer. So in the beginning, when you heat up the roaster, it's important that it's heated up slowly um, to have the insulation and the material warm enough. Um, otherwise, you will have uh, big differences between the first and the second batch. Yeah. And to to reduce that, you have you should have around 30 minutes heating up time, and then you will will be. Yes, so we can already charge into the hopper. Could you load into the hopper? 3 kg, yeah, do the 3 kg. You don't need to waste coffee. <laughs> Germany. I will give you later on, yeah, so. <laughs> okay. So. Cooling down was quite quickly. Now we go back to the 80%. And now, of course, you could fill in also a name for the coffee, filling weight, the green coffee you've used. You can also uh, add there some, some green coffee recipe if you use a blend. So that's also possible to um, set in the recipes section you see on on the top. That's a drum, and uh, it's in fact two drums. And in between these two layers of drum um, is just air, but with this you reduce the conduction heat. If it's just one drum, you have much more conduction heat, so direct heat to, between the beans and the hot metal. Uh, but if you use a double drum, then, then it's kind of a insulation. So I start now, pressing start and charging into the roaster. No, oh, that's one more beam. It started, now the coffee is inside the roaster. You can also see here through the side glass um, the color of the, ro uh, of the coffee. Uh, let's say if we are creating a blend. Uh, is it a good idea to roast them together or separately? This is also depending on what kind of taste you want to, to so uh, can, have. So there's it, no any issues if we roast them together? There could be issues if you have, in general, you will have high density differences and also structure differences between Arabica and Robusta. Sometimes it can work for the taste that you just uh, meet the right taste with this blend. But um, in some cases, it could be that the Arabic is already too dark in this blend um, during roasting, and the Robusta is still very light. And then you get this woody notes from the Robusta. Um, and maybe the other, the Arabica, is uh, giving you the burnt notes. And that's then, of course, not so, so such a good result. It's always better to roast them separately. In my opinion, it's always better to, to roast them separately, but uh, it's possible to roast them together. Like I said, it's always depending on your own specifications, on, on your own product development. If you say, this is your taste for this coffee, uh, I will never say, don't do it. <laughs> okay, so we see we already reached a turning point. So from now onwards, 
we can say uh, product temperature is a good reference point for or reference um, for the product uh, for the color development and for the bean development itself. And we see this green line, which is then the rate of rise. This takes, of course, some time until um, it's uh, reaching a stable number. And from that point onwards, um, you can use it as a reference point as well. But this you don't have quenching water? No, for shop process, we don't have quenching water. No, it's, um, it would be possible to, to add it, but we don't have customers who, who really want it because that's something in the specialty world what the specialty world doesn't want to have, uh, at least uh, up to now. So I, I've been asked this question now several times at this occasion. I don't know if our sales uh, wants to introduce at some point um, quenching water for the smaller shop process as well, but at the moment we don't have it for the shop process. So it's starting from PX120 or Neptune 500 um, where we have quenching water. Only on the cooling seat with air. So as soon as you reach your end point, your desired color, you cool down, you discharge and you cool with air. Yeah, so it's taking the air from the room um, and uh, cooling the coffee then. It's of course, uh, co cooling with only air is a little bit slower than cooling with quench water as well, uh, because with quench water you directly stop the exothermic reactions. On a cooling sieve it takes some 10 to 15 seconds until you really have a cooling effect to the coffee. So that's also something you always have to keep in mind when, when developing a, a product, that the roasting on the cooling sieve still is continued for the next 10 to 15 seconds. Um, yeah, that's something you have to find out if the taste uh, is, is fine with the, with the longer time. It, it's, uh, so your, your reference point for the end of the roasting is the roast end temperature. But like I said, you have to keep in mind it takes a little bit longer um, until really the roasting ends. And it's also depending on the outside temperature. Uh, so when you have this one now outside, uh, the humidity is high and the uh, temperatures are high, so it takes a longer time for the cooling. Um, if you have it here now in the air-conditioned room, the cooling is, is of course much faster. And what is the moisture um, After roasting, you usually have around, yeah, depending of course on the color and the roasting time, you will be somewhere between 1 and 2 percent residual moisture. 1 and 2 percent. So for a lighter roast and a short roast, Normally, closer to the 2%. When you have a longer roast or a darker roast, you will be closer to the 1%. Yeah. Minimum. Uh, we've lost the connection here. Oh, no, you changed the screen, sorry. Um, so the roasting times are the same because we we adjust the capacity of the burner. You've seen we've seen 14 uh, k kilowatts for the gas heated burner, 17 kilowatts uh, for the electrical heated burner. So it's normally the electrical heated version is slightly faster. Uh, you can achieve fa faster faster roasting times, but the drum roaster is always designed for roasting times between somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes. Yeah, so for uh, shorter roasts, um, like I said, you will have then more these acidic floral notes. For longer roasts, um, you will have a little bit decreased acidity, more bitterness, um, more decreased may be also um, aromatics. So usually for espresso roast, for example, you would use rather a bit longer roasting time to reduce the acidity. Otherwise, it's a, it's a very citric, sharp acidity in, in the cup. Um, and then for other preparation styles, which are using filtering methods like the filter paper prep uh, preparation, you usually are a bit shorter. Shorter means somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes, maybe. For espresso, maybe 15 and 20 minutes. How much you can get? Uh, means something, uh, gas can get up to nine minutes. Yeah. 
Eight to nine minutes is the same here as well. What you can achieve with the electrical and the hydrogen also, that uh, uh, short clock? No, not, not really faster than eight minutes. Eight minutes Only if you use a smaller batch size. So with 5 kg? 500. Yeah, okay, with five, 500 you can use also on the uh, gas version you can roast in two, three minutes. Of course. Asking in Jupiter, the big industrial roaster. Uh, uh, yeah, so I also have to look for my coffee. Sorry. <laughs> also okay. These are all the air air so at the moment we are at the yellow point for this coffee. So from now on, uh, most of the drying is done for the coffee, and now we develop aromas. So that's why also the smell of the coffee is a little bit different than of the green coffee. I don't know if you want to smell. <laughs> it's more sweet. It's more like, like bread, toast, butter. Yeah. What you always have to take care of uh, during roasting is not to take out the sampler too long because you then take in here some cold air. What happened? OK. Is our pressure maybe dropped? Yeah, it's always the same. You test it before, it works. <laughs> and then you're in the session and it doesn't work. But the pressure is okay. Hmm? I was just checking why, why it happened. So once it so is roasted, after how long it should be back? Um, so in general, if you have a valve, you could pack it directly after roasting, but I would recommend... When it is warm, you can pack the warm. No, warm you should never pack. You should always let it cool down properly that it is uh, not cold, uh, warm anymore. Um, uh, with a valve, when you have a package with a valve, uh, usually it can degas in through the valve, but normally the degassing directly after roasting is, is a quite big volume. So I would always recommend to wait one to two hours before you seal the package, and then, um, yeah, it can degas into the package, um, especially when you have dark roast or short roasting times. It is always better to pack in one package. That's a, a strategic uh, decision for your own. Yeah, it, if you don't have a valve, the problem is you need to degas it quite a long time because otherwise you might blow up your package. Yeah, because the coffee is really um, degassing quite a lot uh, volume. Um, and if you don't have a valve where this gas can go to, or if you don't have enough um, head space over the coffee, um, your, your coffee package will blow up and maybe even, even open up again. Yeah, so we had an interruption of the roast in between. That's bad, but uh, now it is as it is. So we just continue restarting the burner and uh, heating up the coffee again. Just put them off, then they don't disturb you. <laughs> You need to have a look at the vacuum. I think it's a little bit too low. Yeah, minimum should be 260. So it's just right now at the border. I guess it will be a little bit lower. You see 259. This could be the reason why we had the oval temperature.
your questions. <laughs> Coffee already? Did yeah, they right did they brew it already? Yes. Okay. So in between, if you want, I think the coffee is already brewed. The three different versions. No, they are still doing are it. it. Okay. Are the coffees already brewed? Where where are the three? Three cans. Yes, so you never know from a roasting time and color what the coffee will taste like. So you can, of course, um, have some assumptions when you have a shorter roast and a lighter color. The coffee, like I said, the coffee will be more acidic, more aromatic. No, no. This is also depending on the coffee you use. Yes. Um, because it's always depending on the coffee you use. Yeah? When you have a Robusta coffee, it tastes, of course, completely different than an Arabica coffee. So, should we have a bit of space? To fill it into the cups? Yeah, this is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, so. so we can place the cups here, also. Yeah, I'm really sorry that it's now having problems. It's ready? Okay, so we will try to find out why we have a disruption in, in between. The coffee is brewed, so the three different versions, maybe you want to um, um, test them in between. Let me check if you have pressure here. But we have under pressure. Pressure's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, of course. You can also go uh, use the dryer if you if you want to to smell on your own. In between. No, it's not even reached uh, first crack. So we're waiting for the first crack. The point two companies selling uh, the roasted without the computer. Do they have uh, temperature gears and all that? Yes. So we, we sell it always with this touch screen. So you always have the full control on the touch screen. Right? Of course, the older versions only had the small um, operational panel, but uh, the uh, new Series 3 does, always has it. Does the brand affect the taste, or is it your skills to work? In general, it's the skills. The skills. Yeah. The temperature and the size. Yeah, of course. Okay, so I will have a look on the, on the um, roaster itself. The, the guys are preparing the... the hmm? Done? Yeah, so you can pour into the cups. And please try yourself the three different roasting... Not roasting system, burner systems.
So does somebody want to try a roast on, on his own, on this roaster? I hope that we don't have a burner issue anymore. Did you find a reason? Voltage. Okay. So again, voltage. Okay. So we are now approaching the first crack on this coffee. So are there some more questions on the alternative fuels? Yes. Can we have a microphone for her? Because So I recently heard that Probat also manufactures biomass-based uh, roasters. Biomass means solid biofuel. Mm -hmm. Is that also available? Uh, uh, Ingo can answer. Very good. Yeah, response. thank you. Um, biomass is uh, uh, um, also, from historical reason, uh, in at Leogab in Brazil, already established since uh, Decades, and they are offering for their roasting machines also biogas, biomass um, heating systems. But physically, from the techniques, it could also be another roasting system, because it is an oven with an heat exchanger, and then you can transfer the energy to the roaster. So, I can imagine that um, many other roasters can also operate with some with biomass. But in our portfolio today, the Leogap roaster has it uh, as is unique. Yeah. So they are op uh, offering biomass uh, systems with different biomasses, what you can use to heat up the roaster. Yeah. So they have it as an option for their portfolio available. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, so on the electric roaster, when you change the heat percentage, does it react as quickly as the gas in terms of on your profile? So for example, uh, yeah, is the electric, does it react as fast as the gas? Yes, it is. Uh, so it is, it is not anymore, the older generation of electrical uh, roasters was uh, like, like cooking, let's say. Uh, you have then this energy available and that was an, uh, a wired system, what, it, what we heat up, and it was, of course, not very quick. Here we have a blowing system, what is similar to that, what we are using with gas, and you could already uh, see uh, during the roasting how quick it reacts when you increase the temperature. So I would say it is one by one the same than roasting with gas. And that was also one of the targets we had uh, with this uh, development project. We want to have an electrical heated system that has the same behavior uh, and the same uh, um, way of roasting like gas heated. Other questions? Okay, thank you. Okay. All of you have the three cups. The number Maybe, I don't know if I, they already said which coffee is which. Did you taste any differences? I will try as well. I hope, I think the tree is uh, around now. 
Oops. It's two. One. Uh, this is a medium roast. Yes. Medium roast, 14 minutes 30. Roasting time. And it's a Columbia Excelso. I think a number three as well. They are a little bit different in temperatures. So, any more differences? Do you taste the difference? Less bitter. Okay. Okay. So, what do you think? Which burner system is which coffee? It is hydrogen, I think. Number three. Number three is hydrogen. Should be written on electric. Okay. It's the electric one. So, the one uh, we've seen there as well. Yeah. Number one is natural gas, and number two is uh, hydrogen. Okay. So, but it's all good coffees. Of course, there could be now some differences because the roasting profiles might not match to 100%, but at least the color and the time is the same. Um, and the coffee is the same, but it's, um, yeah, not such a large difference. Yeah, so the coffee really doesn't care which, which fuel you, you use. That's the conclusion. Okay. Does anyone want to test the roaster? No? more questions we can also talk about the roasting process itself so if you have questions on a roasting process uh, we can do that as well so I'm, I'm trainer for, for roasting for green coffee for sensory um, we have a lot of things to talk about if you want to yes you have questions yes that's mainly then, so, yeah. A lot of people roast at home in fry pans, ovens. So does it make a difference in the taste? Yes. And quality? Yes, because in the, in the pan you only have contact heat. So it means you will uh, not have a homogeneous roast throughout the bean. You will have um, some spots which are darker, some spots which are lighter. In the center, you might not have any roast um, development, um, so you will always have some, some um, underdeveloped nose, notes in your cup. Underdeveloped means uh, green, vegetable notes, maybe some cereal notes. Um, and on the other hand, some spots might produce very burnt notes as well. Yeah. So of course, it's an option to, to uh, have a quick um, yeah, roast. The heat it's should be, uh, goes um, equally, all the sides. Yes, so it, it the best touch way the to roast the coffee is with, with uh, air. So that's why our systems are always convectional roasters. Although on a drum roaster, you will never be able to uh, eliminate contact heat because you have a rotating drum and the coffee is always, of course, lying on the bottom of this drum. There are shovels inside the drum which transport the coffee to the top and throw it back into the air. Um, 
but you will always have contact heat in, in the drum roaster. So that's also a characteristic of a drum roaster. You, if you are skilled, you can taste the difference between a drum roaster and a fully convectional roaster, like our tangential roaster, for example, the Jupiter system we've seen so in on. In the end, it, all your skills matter, right? <laughs> Excuse me? In the end, it's, it's all your skills. Definitely, Not yeah. the device. That's definitely the case, yes. You need Good. to know what, what you're doing, um, how to dose the energy to have a nice homogeneous development inside the beam. Because I have an oven at home and it has a drum inside mm -hmm. you know, to cook the barbecue chicken. So I can give a shot with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I can save a lot of cost. <laughs> it's all the skills, right? Thank you. If it's enough for you to judge your coffee, to, to uh, have at least some, um, yeah, some, some. I'm well, just, I'm just trying to understand the technology because there's so many roasters and so much price variables. Mm -hmm. So, and I want to start my own roastery. So, I'm doing all the research. The most important thing is to know how the coffee itself is be behaving because uh, it can get dangerous as well when you um, when you roast the coffee wrong because the coffee has its own um, exothermic reaction and it can if if you roast it wrong and you have too much energy at the end it can just start burning and that's the most dangerous thing so you need to know that there, you need to take away some energy at the end of the roast to be able to control this this um, development yeah. okay. and if you Thank don't you. have this option in a roaster um, yeah thank you you're welcome other questions no in the morning we attended a session on micro coffee roasters mm -hmm. wherein the main chamber of the roaster is fluid bed type instead of a drum yes. roaster has that ever been experimented at industrial scale as well yes so um, there are of course different um, uh, manufacturers of these kind of roasting systems. So our Jupiter roaster is is also a, more or less a fluidized bed roaster. But our concept of roasters is always to be able to reduce the air volumes um, in a recipe um, and still have the coffee moved. And that's the disadvantage when you have only the coffee mo mo moved by the air inside the roaster. Yeah. So if you, if you we have competitors. Um, who built these fluidized bed roasters in, in large scale. But in this case, you need to have a certain air volume to keep the coffee moving. If you don't supply these air volumes, the coffee will fall down onto the bottom. If you have too much, you blow it out of the roaster. But then are there any advantages of this fluidized bed roaster over the drum rotating roasters? So all systems have their advantages or disadvantages. So the advantage of these kind of roasters is um, you can use all, uh, roast all qualities of coffees on these roasters. Um, so also broken beans, chipped beans, but also gourmet coffees, specialty coffees, because it's very flexible. Um, on a drum roaster, or our third uh, roasting system, we have a centrifugal roaster, um, you always have a gap between the rotating part and, um, in this case here, the front of the drum. Yeah, and there, broken chipped uh, beans can fall through this, this gap and, and cause you some problems during the roasting. Yeah. So have you developed any recirculation mechanism of using those beans back into the main uh, inlet? Mm, in order to increase yeah, the yield of the roasters? Leo, Leo Gap has now in, this, uh, in their new uh, drum roaster developed a system where you bring these beans back to the, yeah. to the, to the chamber. Uh, so that is also new uh, in our portfolio and that makes totally sense because otherwise it is lost. No? Yeah, of course. And another word may, because I I'm also since a couple of 20 years in the sales here in, and I was often asked from clients, what is the best system what you have? That is so difficult to answer because everybody has his understanding what he wants to roast in case of roasting time, in case of quality of coffee, what he wants to use, and many, many other parameters as well. And I guess the, the easiest way is always uh, to come and test it because then 
for example, we have in our R&D all roasters placed, and uh, you can test it uh, on drum roasters, on Jupiter roasters, on centrifugal roasters, and then we can find together what is the right choice. Because uh, to invest in a roaster is something, is an investment for decades, uh, and uh, then it is worth to, to, to test it before buying, of course. No? That is what we already, always recommend. Of course, when someone comes to me and says, I want to roast five minutes, then I have no chance with the drum roaster to reach it. Of course, then we have to think about a convection roaster. No? Any other questions? Sorry. What would be the aroma loss percentage during roasting? Excuse me? Aroma loss percentage during roasting. Aroma loss during roasting? Yeah. Uh, so it's depending on how you roast. Yeah, so a typical drum type roaster. So in general, you have a certain uh, phase of your roast where you develop aroma. And if you stretch this phase too long, that's the aroma development phase. If you stretch this phase too long, you de decrease aroma again. So of course, for short roasting systems where you lose a lot of air, um, the roasting times are in general shorter, also the aroma development times are shorter. Um, and if you stretch then too long this aroma development time, like I said, you, you bake the coffee, you take out the aroma. So there's always a, a, a maximum of aroma development uh, you can reach and from which uh, point onwards you just decrease aroma. And it mustn't be bad to, re oh, sorry. <laughs> to reduce aroma. Yeah, sometimes aroma can be overwhelming too. If it's not the right composition of aromas, they don't fit together. So you need to find that out for, for the different coffees to use. Uh, what is the, the optimum for this coffee? But there's n no um, rule to say for this coffee you need to, uh, this development, you need to try it out, cup it, taste it, decide is it good or bad and then you know the the uh, rule of thumb if you want to have more acidity shorter development time if you want to have more bitterness longer development time and you can play around with the color as well yeah. yes No questions anymore? Okay. I, I would like to thank Ms. Elvana and Mr. Ringo Binzen for this interesting session. A round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you. Now I would like to invite Dr. Madhapa, who is the head of Quality Coffee Board, to please present the memento study oh. to Ms. Yeah. Elvana and Mr. Ringo Binzen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A round of applause, please, for him. Uh, just to add something, so if you have, a, if you want to know something about the possibilities. For your, yeah, for your plants or for, for, for your roasters, just come to us. We can discuss what possibilities there are and we can give you an offer. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the World Coffee Conference organized by the International Coffee Organization in collaboration.